Visual Studio and build a very simple C Sharp application. So here I've got Visual Studio open. Let's go to File, New, Project. Okay, in this dialog, on the left side, we've got a section called Templates. And here you see the kind of applications we can build with C Sharp. So as you see in the list, we can build desktop applications, web applications, apps for cloud, mobile, services, workflows, and various kinds of things. But in this course and the subsequent parts of this course, we're just going to focus on console applications. A console application is a very simple application that does not have a graphical user interface. And it's a great learning tool for learning a new language. So we're not going to be distracted by various complexities of larger applications. So on the left side, select Windows. And on the right side, select Console Application. Then give a name to your project. So let's call it Hello World, which is a common tradition when learning a new language. And specify a location. You can put it wherever you want. And know this concept of solution. In Visual Studio, we have this concept of solution, which can have one or more projects. With a very simple application, you have only one solution and one project. But as your application grows, you add more projects, each responsible for something different. For now, we don't have to worry about it. Now click OK. All right, let's see what's happening here. Some developers get a little bit intimidated the first time they open Visual Studio. And that's fair enough because there are so many menus and panels here that is a bit confusing. But let me tell you something. 90% of the time, you're going to use only 10% of these or even less. So don't worry about all these menus here. You don't need to use all of them at all times. 90% of the time, all you need is the code editor here. And sometimes you need the Solution Explorer. In fact, I personally hardly ever use Solution Explorer because I do everything with my keyboard. And if you watch my course, Double Your Coding Speed, you will see that everything is possible with keyboard. So you don't need these panels here. You don't need to grab your mouse and navigate around. You don't really need this stuff. Also, none of the stuff on the toolbar are ever required. Don't worry about it. Everything you can do with your keyboard. All right, now let's take a look at this first C-sharp program. So we created a console application, and on the right side, you see the Solution Explorer panel. In case you don't see that, go to View, and select Solution Explorer. So on the top, you see we have a solution, which has only one project. Under that, we've got the project called Hello World. Look at these four items here. Properties, expand that. We have a file here called assembly info. This is the identification for the assembly that will be produced as a result of compiling this application. So when we compile a console application, we're going to get an executable, and that's an assembly. That assembly has an identification. Look at these attributes here, like the title, description, which is currently not set, company, product, copyright, trademark, culture, a GUID, you know, various kind of things like even version. So these are all part of assembly identification or assembly manifest. In most cases, you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to create an assembly and you want to distribute it, send it to other people, then you may want to come here and give it a proper name and a proper version. So for now, we don't have to worry about it. Under references, you see any assemblies that this project is referencing to do its job. When you create a project with Visual Studio, by default, it has a reference to a bunch of assemblies that you see here. These are all part of .NET Framework. So at a minimum, Visual Studio assumes you're going to use classes in system assembly or system.data to work with databases and so on. You may not necessarily use all these assemblies in your project, but that's just part of the template. App.config is an XML where we store the configuration for this application. Sometimes you may want to store connection strings to the database, or you may want to have some settings about your application. All of them will end up here. And finally, you see program.cs, which is where we are going to start writing code. All right, let's see what's happening here. So in this file, program.cs, on the top, you see a bunch of using statements. What is this all about? Well, our project is called Hello World. So by default, Visual Studio creates a namespace called Hello World. 
When we write code in this namespace, we have access to any classes defined in this namespace. So if we want to use a class that is defined in a different namespace, we need to import it in our code file. And that's why we use the using statement. So by default, Visual Studio has these five using statements. System is a namespace in .NET Framework. And that's where we have all these basic utility classes and primitive types there. System.collections.generic is used to work with lists, collections, and so on. System.link is used to work with data. And it's a comprehensive topic that I have covered in my C-Sharp Advanced course. System.txt is used to work with text, encoding, and stuff like that. And finally, System.threading is used to build multi-threaded applications. In this video, we're going to create a very simple application, and we're not going to use any of these four namespaces here. So we're just going to use system. For now, I leave them there, and then I will show you how to clean them up. All right, so here's our namespace. And inside namespace, by default, we have a class called program. So every console application you create with Visual Studio has a class called program. Inside program, by default, we have a method or a function called main. And that's the entry point to the application. So when you run your application, CLR executes the code inside main method. And that's where everything kicks off. This method is declared as static. And that's something I'm going to cover later in the next section. Methods have input and output. So what goes inside parentheses is the input to the method, which we call parameter or argument. Note that parameters are optional. But in this case, in the default template, the main method has a parameter called args, which is of type string array. We're going to learn about string array in the next section. What you see before the method name is the return type or the output of the method. Void in C Sharp means nothing. That means this method does not return any value. It just contains some code. That's it. Also, note that C Sharp is a case sensitive language. So, this main has to be with capital M. Otherwise, CLR is not going to find this method as the entry point of the application. Okay, and one last thing is note these curly braces. So, wherever we have a block of code, we need to surround it with curly braces. So, that is applicable for methods, for classes, and for namespaces. All right, now let's write a very simple C-sharp program. So let's go here. We have a class called console, which is used to read data from console or write data to it. It has a bunch of methods. We can access these methods using the dot notation. And here you see various members of this class. Methods are indicated by a purple cube. So beep is used to play a beep sound or clear is used to clear the console. We're going to use the right line method. This method can optionally take a parameter. So I'm going to pass a string here. Hello world. Just that. And note that statements in C sharp terminate with a semicolon as you see here. Now take a look at using system on the top. Do you see that it's highlighted whereas the others are grayed out? The reason for that is, in this file, we are using a class called console, which is defined in the system namespace. That's why that using statement is active. We are not using any classes defined in other namespaces, and that's why they're grayed out. So we can get rid of them to make our code cleaner. We can either delete each one by Control X, like that. Or if you're using ReSharper, you can get rid of all of them by pressing Alt and Enter here and selecting the first option, which is remove unused directives in file. So it's faster. Now let's run the application with control and F5. So this window that you see here, this black window is what we call console. And that's why this kind of project is called console application. Okay, that's it for this lecture. From this point, in every lecture, we're going to learn something new about C Sharp, and we can write more interesting and more complex programs. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and thank you for watching. Well, P, which is 3.14. As you see, I have bolded here. The first letter of the first word is lowercase. C Sharp data types.
and these are C-sharp keywords. 